Our house, Piccaninny Cottage, was within walking distance of the sanctuary and the Badger Creek Primary School. A cosy home nestled amongst protective gum trees. The highlight was my mother's garden, always a delight to the eye. My father, the naturalist David Flay, recorded much of our time at Badger Creek on film, including some Kodachromes taken back in the mid-1940s. Memories can be a little hazy, but I can still remember the vivid colours and luring odours of my mother's garden. Large empty paddocks with the towering sentinel Mount Riddle watching over Badger Creek. David Flay's Pride and Joy, the Hillsville Sanctuary, where nature had a haven and people could see the critters of the Australian bush in their natural surroundings. As a pastime during his busy time as director of the sanctuary, David Flay took up the sport of kings, falconry. The birds, which included peregrine falcons and Horatia the wedge-tailed eagle, were considered to be the naturalist's pets as were all the animals, birds and reptiles at the sanctuary. Running through the midst of the sanctuary, Badger Creek, a natural home to the platypus. My mother was always pointing out something botanical wherever we went. Mary Sigrid Flay was, after all, a botanist, and while my father's specialty was animals, my mother loved the plant life. Badger Creek and the Sanctuary were within a few minutes' walk from Piccaninny Cottage. At the rear of our house, we had our own pool containing, of course, water, water lilies, lots of yabbies, and a few fish. It was a good place for kids to muck around. Here I am on the right, with my brother Robert, we called him Fasca, and my brother's school friend on the left. And in that spacious back garden at Piccaninny Cottage, Badger Creek identity Alf Wright would play tunes to a very small but musically receptive Stephen. Those of us who were at the Badger Creek Primary School in the 40s and 50s will surely remember the kiosk, which not only catered for school kids with a few bob to spare, but for visitors to the sanctuary. Shop attendants in 1940 were Jack Brown, Mr. Pomeroy and Grace Regan. Grace had attended the Badger Creek Primary School between 1934 and 1939. Grace drove that small bus, and as well as ferrying passengers to and from the sanctuary, little Stephen went along under Grace's wonderful care. Grace Regan used to play songs on the piano at the Regan family home, I remember this well. To this day, Grace still plays music on both organ and piano. Grace's father, Jack Regan, was a wonderful person too. A real character, as we remember Jack. Here's Jack Regan, with my sister Rosemary, out the front of Piccaninny Cottage with Rosie's pet possum. Next to our home was the Summerlee Golf Course. There were, of course, golfers there, but it was a great place to play. And to hitch a ride on Eric Hook's sled, pulled along by Rosie the Draft Horse. Horses were a big part of the Flay family life. From the very early years, riding a Shetland pony at the sanctuary was a regular event. I went solo almost before I could walk. Larger horses were a bit more difficult for a little kid so the assistance of sisters Rosemary and Betty was needed to climb on board. Around 1950, we had a visit from members of the Royal Shakespearean Company performing in Melbourne. Among the cast was Anthony Quayle, Robert Hardy, and British actress Diana Wynyard, who met my father's pet barking owl Andy on the front lawn of Piccaninny Cottage. The male actors had lessons in boomerang throwing. The world-famous U.S. Western author Zane Grey met a more gentle character than those horrible gunmen he wrote about. In the late 1930s, Zane Grey and his secretary visited the sanctuary. 
What strange creatures inhabit this very earth? was one thought which no doubt entered the mind of science fiction author H. G. Wells when he met a platypus at the sanctuary in 1939. Andy the Barking Owl was so tame he gladly performed on a tree during the filming of this David Flay Kodachrome movie clip. This was around the year 1950. Back in 1942, in the midst of World War II, the Victorian Railways and the Tourist Bureau commissioned a colour nature documentary all about the inhabitants of the Hillsville Sanctuary. Wildlife in Bushland was narrated by Australian radio host John Deese with a full symphony orchestral score. The 19-minute film has since been restored. Wildlife in Bushland was shown on several occasions at the local hall to the entire population of Badger Creek and District. Around 1950, Australian instructional films headed by pioneer documentary maker Lex Halliday made two nature films in and around Badger Creek. The Platypus starred Badger Creek primary school pupil Mervyn Bullis, and one scene was filmed inside the school itself. Keith the Wombat, with Rosemary Flay and her pet, was the second instructional film to be made. Both were narrated by Australian newsreel commentator David Lowe. Both these films, The Platypus and Keith the Wombat, are in the National Film and Sound Archives and along with Wildlife and Bushland are featured on YouTube. And around the winter of 1950, down came the snow. One big fall and the snow settled for a day or two. My sister Betty Flay helped find some grass for a kangaroo at the sanctuary. My father also took his large still camera to the Summerlee golf course, while Mrs Flay carefully trod the snow-covered links. Young Stephen had a great time building a snowman at the front of Piccaninny Cottage. Mustn't forget the Flay family milk supply. Our cow, aptly named Mooey, kept us provided with fresh milk and not forgetting that delicious scalded cream. We can never forget two precious family friends. Mr. Wandon, who all Badger Creek residents knew, and Ray Young of Healesville, pictured outside Ray Young's shop in Healesville. Then there was the Henderson family, pictured here at their Maroondah Dam shop and cabins. Mrs. Henderson, an artist, was devoted to the district and lived a long and fruitful life. Every Sunday, it'd be off to Sunday school. Down the little road towards the Badger Creek Primary School, turn left to that small wooden church, which has no doubt long gone. Along with my sister Rosemary and brother Robert, Fasca, we posed outside Rosemary's bark hut near the entrance to Piccaninny Cottage. Friends would come to the house to play. Darrell Brew, Norman St John... And here is Max Galvin. If you're still around, Max, I fondly remember your visits back then. Not forgetting the coins and the mullets and all those wonderful kids at the Badger Creek Primary School. The Flay kids had an unfair advantage at the school pet shows. We had a big lineup of animals to call upon. My sister won one year with Mooey the Cow. I had first prize another time with a blue-tongued lizard. Belated apologies to the boy I chased around the schoolyard armed with that blue tongue. The boy ran into a tap. I just hope you were okay after that. I took off too after the incident. Looking back over those days at Badger Creek, perhaps to use an old cliché, were the best days of our lives. None of that distracting television or internet just the joys of an almost perfect place and environment, with the added advantage of good friends, friends for life. 
and all those close encounters with the critters of the Australian bush. The maker in his wisdom has bestowed upon the Southland a heritage of wildlife as a gift for you and me. All like their mother nature in their gentleness and beauty, let us cherish them forever, ever living, ever free. The wildlife of Australia, strange, unique and lovely, let us cherish it forever for the whole wide world to see. Mm-hmm.